Good morning. Good morning. Because you came today, you asked, and whenever you ask, you always receive. So somewhere this mu morning in the music, the words, the fellowship, but most of all, by the power of the Holy Spirit within you, you will find something that will lift you one notch higher in your upward spiral toward realized oneness. And so it is. I had an interesting experience this week. <clears throat> I'm a multitasker, and I have been practicing some of Deepak Chopra's eye exercises. One of them is you look at an object near you and then you look at something on the far horizon back and forth, back and forth. And I was walking along doing that and all of a sudden this car full of young boys came by. One of them leaned out. He must have been practicing eye exercise too because he said, same to you lady. Emerson said, what lies behind us, what lies before us, are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. What lies within us? The wisdom of the ages, for one thing. The 12 powers are there. Faith, understanding, will, imagination, zeal, power, love, wisdom, strength, elimination, and life. They are actual powers in our body that we can activate by our word and by our will. There's a missionary who was uh, practicing and she, <laughs> she uh, uh, went to this village where it seemed like the women were always having babies. So she took some birth control pills, stuck a pole down in the ground, and she said, now, once a month, I want you to take one of these pills. And a little later, two or three months, she came back, and all the women were pregnant. And she said, what happened? Didn't you take the pills? And they said, yes, ma'am. Every day, we put them on the pole. <laughs> Our perception is so different. One of the biggest deterrents to self-realization or manifesting Christ is judgment. Friends, I uh, hate to tell you this, but what you see in others is in you. You couldn't see it unless it was also not in you. We're being pushed herded, conjoled, pulled to go within, to live and move and have our being out of the Holy Spirit here. The old is not working anymore. It's passing fast away. Help from the outside sources no longer operate as well. Why would we resist? being in the awareness of our real self where there is only wisdom, truth, peace, joy, perfectness. As the old passes away, we must hold fast to the unchangeable Holy of Holies, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Basic truth is as within, so without. Whatever you're thinking, doing, acting from within yourself, it will outpicture in your outer life. Uh, as above, so below. If we claim it as below, so above. Now, there is one added factor. Everything is speeding up. The old saying, time flies, is truly here now. There's an urging to live in this present moment, listening to our heart guiding, guidance, putting away childish things, 
so many people as they grow older tend to live in the past and recall all the things that happened to them years ago. I read that once and years ago I started trying to just let that go. As those thoughts came, I blessed that thought or the activity that preceded it. And after a while, I noticed my sisters would say, remember when so-and-so? I didn't remember it. I can hardly remember my growing up years anymore. Someone will say something, and I have no active memory of that. Our job is to stay in this awakened Christ in me. How do we do that? As we get anything that we desire, we ask the Holy Spirit to do it for us. And Jesus left us the Comforter. He said, I go, but I won't leave you comfortless. I leave the Holy Spirit with you and that is what will bring you into all truth. Ray and I love to watch the NBA games, and we've noticed that it's not always the best team who wins, but it usually is the team that has more passion, that has the intention to win, even though the other team may be better. And so we cry, Oh, that I may know him, with our brother Paul, in the power of his resurrection, in that new life, that old life is gone, if we can just know that we can have the new life and all of the blessings of it, ceasing from our labors completely. Some time ago, some of you may remember <clears throat> the wonderful songwriter and unity minister, Carmen. And I called her one day, she was ill, and I said, how are you doing, Carmen? And she said, Leona, I'm, I'm having a really hard time. And she began to talk about her condition. And I said, well, of course you are. You have walked through the valley of the shadow of death. And then I had a thought. I said, Carmen, would you write a song about that? And she said, okay. About four hours later, she called and sang me that beautiful song, only she had changed one word. She, it was when I walked through the valley of the shadow of life, and with Jesus with me, I'll go through. A beautiful, beautiful expression of her faith. She had enough truth in her bank to call forth that needed word. What deposits are you making into your bank of life? Whatever you're putting in day by day with your thoughts and your words, that will outpicture. If we put hope, joy, peace, love, healing, prosperity thoughts in there as we need them, we can reach in and bring them out. We do have all things. Scripture tells us all things are God's, and if God's, then Christ, and if Christ, then yours. Some part of you knows this. Some part of you urges you always to accept that and uh, lay hold of it that some part of you feels a pull beyond reason, deep within the core of your being, that God is calling you by name. We're being called to recognize this divinity that is in us, to experience it every moment. Your soul will always move you deeper to within yourself. You can't stop the process. The Christ in you longs to go home, to stop running from fear and chaos. In the deepest part of you, you really want to surrender yourself 
to that abiding and trust. Most of all, we want to cease fearing the forward steps of leaving behind the old ways. That reminds me, this is just a little feng shui tip I'll give you. In your closet, make sure that all of your shoes are facing outward indicating that you are ready to take a forward step. Nelson Mandela said this, our fear is not that we are inadequate. The deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, factually? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people will not feel secure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence, automatically liberates others. God has laid his hand on you, dear one, and imparted to you all that he gave to Jesus the Christ. And now is the appointed time for us to begin to demonstrate the gifts within us, to lay hands on the sick, restore the fallen, speak peace to the raging waters of chaos in our world. Every time we get a news report, we can say peace, peace, peace to those awful things that are happening out there. Obey that nudging within you of spirit to lift your hand, to lay hands on others, and then leave what happens after that is none of your business. It's the Holy Spirit's job to activate whatever, however, in perfect divine order. Let the same words that our friend Paul cried in his letter to the Philippians, Oh, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. What did Jesus suffer other than the cross? He wept at callousness and the ignorance of the people and cried, Oh, how oft I would have gathered you under my wings as the hen gathers the chicks. How often have we heard a call and yet not heard it. The greatest gift we ever could have is the gift of choice. We can choose any moment what thoughts we let circulate in there. And how whatever choice that is, that will outpicture in our world. We can choose to be constantly dwelling in his presence. I choose that. To do only what the thought we see the Father doing and trust the universe to bring it to pass. As Paul said, not as though we've already apprehended, but we follow on having this consuming desire to know him until that word, that light, becomes bone of my bone and flesh of, a, of my flesh, and that becomes the reality of me. A couple of Sundays or more ago, I had asked, each of you, I shared with you my vision for this church, and I had asked of you, as the Spirit directs, to write out your vision for this center. 
and put it in the suggestion box back there. If the Spirit gives you utterance, would you do that? Writing the ancient kings, when they uh, said, sent out a decree, they said, so let it be written, so let it be done. There is a power in the written as well as the spoken word. Can you believe for it? When they asked Jesus, what must I do to be saved? His answer was, only believe. What must you do to receive the desire of your heart? To know your purpose for incarnating in this life. To know what your next step is. To face what you face every day in your life. We have that right to call and know that he will answer us and will take us through. I re uh, listened to a little bit of Joel Osteen this morning, and he was saying, no matter what comes to you, no matter what is happening, let your thought be, all is well, all is well. In pain, in hurt, in joy, in a problem of any kind, we can proclaim all is well because we know this is not our home, this body is not my real self, but in Him I really live and move and ask for it. When we ask how to stay in the awareness of our Christ self, the answer always is only believe. In the Course in Miracles, there's a, there's a place that says, there's a place in you where there is perfect peace. There is a place in you where nothing is impossible. May we be quiet a moment, and will you just let these words reverberate? Ask the Holy Spirit what you're to take home from being here today that is pertinent to your life, your love, your joy, your peace. Contemplate the yet more of you that is there. These words from Yogananda, God is crying for you. He wants you to return to him in all your ways. It is your birthright. It is your destiny. And we must claim our divine heritage. God is a cosmic vibration in the world. God, as the word, is humming through all atoms constantly, eternally calling you to come home, come home. And now remember and believe that we can uh, just be, just be. Stop trying to fulfill all these things that we once labored over in our life. Carmen wrote a song called Let's Be. Let's be what we may, are made to be. Isn't this our destiny? Let's get started now, today, upward on our way. Let's be what we really are. Seek and find our inner star. Let's go forward in the light, faces shining bright. Sons, daughters of God, unlimited are we. Let us prove that truth that sets us free. Let's accept our highest good, knowing we're in brotherhood. Now the good is all we see. Let's don't wait. Let's be. God bless you, and God bless our world. <laughs>